I feel the faith in the house, and I know where it's coming from. Ladies, you have been built up this weekend, right? So when you think, what's with all the t-shirts and the hoodies, and we know what's behind it, eh, girls? Yes. And I also heard that this crowd from 11 o'clock is the vibrant crowd. It's true, I hear it. So I hear you guys respond, you're alive, you're full of life, and I love that. So, um, well, my name is Cody. I um, come originally from Romania. I moved to Holland 19 years ago almost, when I got married to the best Dutch guy. <laughs> I have to be so careful what I say. <laughs> and if he's watching online, then I score points. <laughs> it's also good because I sometimes make jokes about him when he's not around. I was wondering how to start this morning, so then a good friend of mine said, who was here in the first service, Loshni, she said, I know, he was here a month ago, and then you can say, you had the beast, and now you have the beauty. And then I realized he watched online this morning, so I had to apologize, he forgave me. But hey, there you go, also for you, you had the beast and now you have the beauty. <laughs> no, he, uh, he's pretty good looking himself. Today, um, I, think I, I think I have a message for us this morning, and I think the Lord wants to deal with some disappointment in our lives. Um, also for the ones watching online. If you're watching from Holland, by the way, online, please just throw some hearts in the chat. I feel your heart behind me supporting. <laughs> but uh, even if you're watching online, the Lord is gonna minister to you. The Spirit will minister just like to the ones in the room. You are missing though the warm atmosphere, but hey, you're blessed anyway. Um, is there anyone here who have never been through disappointment? Can I? Maybe see your hands. Oh, no hands. Online, anyone who has never experienced disappointment. I think through life here on earth, we had so many expectations. I think even from being small, we grow up expecting. When I'm bigger, when I get a job, when I get a boyfriend, when I get a wife, when I get kids, then it will all change. And it doesn't and we get disappointed. So many times, I, I got married when I was 26. Please, don't do the math, just doesn't matter. <laughs> Seriously, I got to an age at that point that I thought 24, 25, I thought, oh my goodness, I'm getting old, I'll never get married. Now I'm like, seriously? <laughs> you're not old when you're 24, 25, okay? You're old when you're, you're never old. <laughs> Don't want to call any age. <laughs> we always think, yeah, but once I get married, that was my girl's, as a girl's dream. Once I get married, oh, it will be so much better. I cannot tell you too much because my husband is probably still watching also this service. <laughs> but you get into disappointment. You think, oh, if I finally have kids, then. If I finally get that job, if I can go to the university or it's all so natural, so human, and we put all our expectations in it just to get up disappointed. When I'm looking for the, there's expectations we build in our life and that brings disappointment. When we look online for the codes about expectations, the top two codes on expectations are the secret of happiness is low expectations. And the second one, life delivers far less disappointments when your expectations are low. And it's true. It really is. On an earthly level, on an everyday life, the less we expect, the less disappointed we get. But how sad. What kind of life is that? Cannot expect anything because, yeah, then you have it and then you're disappointed because it doesn't work out how you expect it to work out. 
So today I have good news, because it's not all bad news today, <laughs> otherwise I would not be here. There is hope which does not... I, you were the vibrant crowd. <laughs> you were the one talking back. Hope does not disappoint. So expectations disappoint, but there's obviously, the Bible says hope that does not disappoint. Let me just tell you from Psalm 42. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will praise him, my Savior and my God. This is what the Bible is teaching us. It really like, looks like it's contradiction with what the world is saying. So put your hope in the Lord. Psalm 37, those who put their hope in the Lord will inherit the land, will not get disappointed, but they will inherit something. Psalm 130, put your hope in the Lord, for there is faithful love with the Lord, and with him is in him is redemption. Psalm 40, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. So instead of getting disappointed and getting downcast and distressed, and crushed, you fly higher. So what's going on? Why is the Lord, the, the uh, world teaching us no expectations? The less, the better. And the other side, the Bible saying, the more hope, the better. It's like, huh? how? You interested? Cool. You will be blessed. First of all, when you're in this, on this side and you have been going on, you have been going through a lot of disappointment in your life, sometimes small, sometimes big, sometimes huge. You have expected, people let you down, you don't dare to trust anymore, you've been disappointed, it never works out for you, it works out for everyone else except for you. When you're disappointed, you're not alone. There's a Naomi in the Bible, there's a Hannah, there's a Samuel, there's a David, there's an Elijah, all disappointed. All have been through disappointment. Moses, Abraham, Sarah, Job, Paul. In Ecclesiastes, the writer says, all is vanity. I have tried it all under the sun. Nothing brings fulfillment. All disappointment, all vanity. That's interesting. So, good news, you're not alone. I think it's so good to acknowledge from each other, we're all human beings, even the ones you see here on the stage. Trust me, we're not perfect. We have been through disappointments. We are going through disappointments. It's good to know that from each other. The devil cannot come to you and say, don't say that. Don't say you're disappointed. Don't say your life is a mess because you're the only one. Shame on you. Christian, disappointed, distress, burned out, depressed. It's okay to be honest about it. We're going to dig into one great funny story where we're going to learn a lot from expectations, disappointment, and hope. There it comes. Let's look at Abraham. He was in on my list with the names Abraham. All of the, all of, out of the blue, all of a sudden, the Lord comes to him in verse 15, in uh, Genesis 15, from verse 1. He says, after this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision and said, don't be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. And let me see, your great reward yeah, Abraham said, well, that's nice. Um, he says, well, sovereign God, uh, Lord, yeah, what can you actually give me since I have, I am remained childless? His pain is coming out. I have been waiting for years. No child, nothing. Frustration, pain, disappointment. And he goes on saying, the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer. And Abra Abraham said, he goes on, the Lord doesn't even get a chance to come in between. He says, 
Can you see it? You have given me no children. Well, it takes boldness to say that to the Lord, yet he does it. And I think this is for us to learn. We get disappointed by things which don't go our way in our life. And when we're really honest, the questions in our heart are like, Lord, you did that to me. You're sovereign. He even starts like, sovereign Lord, you didn't give me any kids. How can you provide now? And how, why would you even give me a lot of stuff when you didn't give me kids? That was my expectation. That's what I wanted. And that's what you didn't do. Well, you don't have to do the rest of the stuff. I think when we're honest, deep down inside of heart, in our hearts, we uh, blame God. He let things happen in our life. Yeah, if you're all sovereign, why did that happen? Why did you let it happen? Look how hurt, look how disappointed I am now. What's, why, why, why should I even be even happy with my life? When? And then you fill it in. And that's okay to say that to the Lord. When that's in the deepest of your heart, this is the encouragement. Just say it. And then the word of the Lord came to him in verse 4. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. There's a promise coming to him. I will give it. He took him outside and said, look up to the sky, count the stars. If you can even count them, this is how much your offspring will be. There's such a great promise here. And Abraham is like, oh, wow. Okay, cool. Um, he believed the Lord just like that. And this, the Lord credited this as righteousness. Now you think, well, this is easy. The Lord comes with a promise and we're like, yeah, cool. Well, I believe it, Lord. You didn't give it for 90 years, but because you say it now, I believe it. Easy, cool. So then he says to him, I am the Lord who brought you out. I think the Lord knows actually what's really going on in our heart. Even if we say, yeah, we believe it. He said, please just stop and look back in your life. What did I all do for you? He said, look, I got you out. I brought you out of Ur and I got you out of uh, Chaldeans and to give you the land you are you're gonna possess. I did all that for you to bring you to a new land. And then Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, how can I know? So many times my expectations are based on what I've seen in my life. I've heard that before, you know? Yeah, 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 you can, you can tell me now it's a promise, but I've heard that before and it never happened. Or, my auntie also prayed, and you're asking me to pray now, but my auntie also prayed and she died. When our expectations keep on looking back and we base the expectations for the future, on what happened or didn't happen in the past, you'll get disappointed. You're very quiet. <laughs> Can you understand my English? Yes. <laughs> cool. And the Lord said, hey, it's okay to ask. How do I know I can inherit it? The answer is there. I really want to encourage you this morning, when you have questions, when the Lord is asked, telling you, hey, there's a promise for your life, I have a call for your life, I have something ready for you, and when you say, yeah, but last time, it's okay to say it, how do I know? Okay, you tell me, don't look back anymore, okay, Lord, I'm not going to look back, but how do I know? That's okay to ask. He did. He asked, how do I know? And there it comes, and this is the answer. Genesis 15, verse nine. He said to him, the Lord said to Abraham, bring me three year, a three-year-old cow, a three-year-old female goat, all kinds of animals, bring them all together. He brought them to him, cut them in half, laid it in pieces opposite each other. He did not cut the birds in half. And then 
the Lord told him to prepare a sacrifice. This is the answer to the question, how do I know I will inherit? The Lord's answer is sacrifice. I know you're already going further, just wait. And then in verse 11, birds of prey came down to the car carcasses, but Abraham drove them away. Yay! Why is that cool? Because once you inherit, once you hear a promise, the lies come in. The lies come in, the doubt comes in, the fear comes in. When you're still awake and it's still fresh, when you can run to church, you can run to Pastor Suzanne, say, please pray for me. I need your prayer. I heard the Lord saying this to me, but now I'm doubting because I see that and that and that and that and what uh, all went wrong. Please pray for me. She'll pray for you. You're all boost up again. You're like, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. And then all the lies out in Jesus' name. I'm fine. I can do it. This is what Abraham did with the birds. <sighs> go away. Go away. Go, 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 go. And they left. So he's like, yeah. He was the man again. And then, as the sun was setting, verse 12. Can you say this with me? As the sun was setting, when it gets dark. When it gets dark, maybe even more thoughts, maybe even really seriously in your sleep, that's when the devil is attacking, when you cannot see it anymore, when it's all blurry, when you're all distracted, when you look at circumstances, when you look at people, you're all distracted, it's like, oh, I, uh, what did Pastor Suzanne pray? Uh, it was something with, oh, I don't remember. And then the night comes, and something else happens, and something else happens, and your child got, does crazy things or whatever, and then you don't know it anymore. And then it comes dark. A deep sleep came over Abraham, and suddenly, can you read it with me? Great terror and darkness. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has been through this. The great terror, the darkness that you think, oh, how? What did the Lord say? How would I inherit that promise? It overcame him as well. So when the sun has set and it was dark, a smoking, oh, can we have it? A smoking, a smoking, and a flaming torch. What is that, ladies? The light, and who is the light? In his greatest terror and darkness, the light shows up. Not impressed by his darkness, not impressed by the terror he has been through. Jesus himself shows up. Amen. And do you know what he does? He makes a covenant. But Abraham was sleeping. Yeah. Abraham was sleeping. So the Lord thought, I do it. In your darkest moment, I want to save you. I'm going to make a covenant with myself. Outside the human being, outside you. You cannot influence it. We can try, trust me. <laughs> you cannot influence it. It's happening outside you, in your darkest moment. He has already made a covenant with himself. When the sun has set a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch appeared and passed between the divided animals. This is the way they had in that time a covenant. Normally, if you make a covenant with someone, you both go through the animals, through that blood, and through that you say, we're in a covenant for life. What's mine is yours, what's yours is mine. Well, trust me, I don't want the Lord to make a covenant with me 
what's mine is his. <laughs> I have nothing to give. But when he makes it with himself and he takes us in him, what's his is ours and what's his is ours. Yeah? Outside. And that was so needed because we go, it goes on. In Genesis 16, verse 1, Sarai, that's the wife of Abraham, has borne no children. But the Lord gave them a promise, I'll give you a child. And they were waiting, waiting, waiting. Covenant happened. Now it will come, right? Is there anyone else who liked to help the spirit once in a while when we need help or am I the only one? Yes, thank you, Werner. There is an, oh, great, I love you all. <laughs> Sometimes my husband even makes jokes about me trying to help the spirit. Because I think, yeah, but he's not fast enough. <laughs> he does it through me. <laughs> not always. Most of the time he doesn't. <laughs> This is what they did. They were looking at Sarah and, is your belly growing? Nope. Okay. Well, Sarah was a woman and we women, beside the fact that we're all amazing, we, uh, <laughs> I see a man laughing like, mm-hmm. Sometimes we have great ideas and sometimes we have less great ideas. And this is the time when Sarah had the less great idea because she thought, hey, but listen, the Lord would give us a child and there's nothing happening, but maybe I can help. I think I know how. <laughs> Men are not allowed to laugh. Your part is coming in just a bit. So she says, listen, I have... She had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abraham, listen, honey, the Lord has kept me. Ooh, there you have it again. She was also pretty disappointed. She also had expectations. Everyone around me has kids and I don't. And I'm really old by now. Oh no, we wouldn't call her old. She was advanced in age. <laughs> she was, got to an age which you would think by now, already, well, for a while, you couldn't have kids anymore anyway. And she said, yeah, but the Lord didn't give me, so she puts the blame also on the Lord. Interesting. So the Lord has kept me from having children. But listen, honey, I have an idea. Now you go and sleep with my slave. Yeah, perhaps I can build a family through her. And all the men listen, uh, Abraham agreed to that. Yeah, just like that. Abraham agreed to what Sarah said. Sometimes I think, can we have in this time, now in our marriages, the men agreeing to what we say? <laughs> I think they learned their lesson. They're like, no, let's not agree. Maybe that's where it's coming from that they... This is what Pastor Josh means when he turns around that he's like, yeah. Now I can imagine, it's like, did I do my hair good? But he's like, oh, where's my hair? <laughs> Don't tell him I said that, he's not here today. <laughs> I thought, what a trust these guys have, the, the, on the, the, our pastors. They just left, they leave me here on my own. They, well, hopefully they will not listen back. You don't tell them, otherwise I'll never come back. <laughs> they will ask my husband to come back and then you have the beast, remember? But anyway, no, he's sweet. So then Abraham just agreed. Okay, well, listen, when the Lord promised, yeah, I heard him, Abraham promised, I heard him. So if nothing, nothing happens to you and now you tell me to do it differently, well, okay. He probably thinks, what do I have to lose? So after Abraham has been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarah, his wife, took his Egyptian slave, Hagar, and gave it to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. And when she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Then Sarah said to Abraham, who? Huh? To 
to Abraham. So, are you following the story? <laughs> Sarah said to Abraham, you are responsible. Like, seriously, I think my husband will like, make up your mind. <laughs> you want me to go to her, and now I did. Listen to you, dear. Now I'm responsible. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Poor guy. You almost feel sorry for him. <laughs> no, we don't feel sorry for the guys, just to be clear. <laughs> so, Abraham, now you're responsible for the wrong I'm doing. I, I'm suffering. I put my slave into your arms, and now she's pregnant, and she despises me. He's like, yeah. <laughs> I think, what a mess. And how did it get there? She had expectations. The Lord came with a promise, she meddled in. She took it in her hands. I know how to fix this. So the Lord is like almost, Lord, your part is just to tell me, what do you want for my life? I'll make sure it happens. Whew. A while ago when I was here at Gracious, I think it's already three years ago, I told uh, the ladies my story. When I was 20, I went to America to get married. I was really wanted to get married. I was so looking forward to it. And, and when you know the Lord wants you to get married, I think, or what the Lord wants you to have anything, it doesn't matter which, you just take things in your hand and it's like, yeah, but he wants me, it's a good man, it's a Christian, you know, probably a good husband, so yeah, why not? Well, it was America, now I'm married to a Dutch guy, now you can put the two together. <laughs> Never happened. So the disappointment after that, Lord, why? Yeah, he's like, I never sent you there. It's so important to do things in the right timing, the right place, with the Lord. It's really not complicated, I think it's just, he wants you to hear his voice more than you can be in the way of that. He wants you to hear his voice more than you can be in the way of that. Sometimes we're so afraid we don't hear him, but he wants it more than, you get it? He will make sure you hear his voice. So no panic. No fear. He just makes sure. When, and when you feel like, uh, I don't know, but he promised me, but yeah, this doesn't feel quite right. Hands off. Don't force it. Don't push it. And ask him, Lord, make it clear. Hands off. Let him do it. Hands off. To Abraham, I would probably say something else. But I'm not going to even let you go there with your mind. Probably too late. So, um, then the Lord has to come back to Abraham. After all this, Sarah disappointed again. After all this, Genesis 17, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your number. Abraham fell face down and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you, Abraham. You will be the father of many. No longer will you be called Abraham. He gets a new name, a new identity. You will be called Abraham. For I have made you father of nation. It's like a whole bomb. It's a whole package when the Lord is blessing. There's a new name. There's a new identity. There's a new life. Literally, new life in her. Because she also gets a new name. There's like a whole new start. So before that, they just had a, a try. Maybe this is it. And it feels like, ah, this is not it. It's only strive and hate and blame. And when the Lord is giving, it's like the new birth. It feels like hope. You get the difference? 
You were vibrant, remember? You get the difference? Yes. Cool. Okay. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants, descendants and that is you and me, after you for the generations to come. I will make a new covenant. This is my covenant with you. A covenant. Does that sound familiar? To anyone? Yeah? No, Pastor Suzanne, you were in the first service and you know the answer. <laughs> Remember what Jesus said to his disciples when he came with bread and wine? This is my new I'm not sure I'm coming back. You're not talking back. <laughs> this is my new covenant. So what happened to Abraham in his deepest, darkest moment, Jesus came as a light, making a new covenant. And he's saying it's an everlasting. It's not just for you, Abraham. It's for all these ladies and gentlemen sitting in Redemption South Africa, sitting in Redemption Netherlands, and all over the world watching this. There's a new covenant. It's also for you. Because in your darkest moments, when you tried and tried and tried to fulfill the promises in your life, and you only got disappointment, he said, you know what? When you put your hopes on me, it will not disappoint. Because, amen, because it's placed not on what happened to auntie so-and-so or to previously years in my life, but it's placed on something which will never change. It's the sacrifice of Jesus and that is above time. It stays forever. It's everlasting. It will never change. That's why the hope you put in that, it will never disappoint. And the blood which we saw happening there with Abraham, the blood of Jesus who was cut through and through so that he can cut a covenant that you know, even when you fall, he has you. Even when you fall, he's like, nope. And it's not like this because this you can let go like this he can never let go so don't be afraid even if you had years when you thought I was so disappointed even with the Lord I think he let it happen or I think he even sent it no he said I'm a good God I hate it when it happens to you that's why I died on the cross that's why I shed my blood that's why I come to you with a new covenant which says my beloved I'll never let you go. I'm not the one behind it. But when we meddle in, it will disappoint because it's human made. But when it's heavenly made, it will not disappoint. <laughs> Amen? So in 1 Corinthians 11, it says, in the same way Jesus took the cup after the supper and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. And he says, do this as often and you drink it in remembrance of me. Remember the births, birds of prey which came to Abraham to steal the seed, to attack? And this is what he says, as often as you do it, remember me. Don't remember your past experiences. Don't remember what auntie uh, and uncle and grandpa and grandma, what they have been through. You have a covenant with your God. You. And when we say fix your eyes on Jesus, it sounds sometimes, sometimes like, yeah, but how? But this is really easy. Here you have literally something in your hand where you can fix your eyes on. Sometimes it's vague, like, fix my eyes on Jesus. Where? Here. As often as you do it, remember me. So every dark moment in your life, 
If it's 10, 10 times a day, so be it. So be it. Every time, so as often as you need it, in remembrance of me. This is his promise to us. And then, I'm going to close with Romans 5. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Ladies, remember my sermon yesterday morning? You know, the tribulations, the pressing, that's just a wink to you. Knowing that the tribulations, pressings in your life, when it's been tough, produces perseverance. Perseverance, that's patience. It produces character, makes you an adult. Character produces hope. And now hope does not disappoint. And because, why? Because the love of God has been poured in your heart. When? The ultimate act, act of love was done at the cross. Based on that, we know it will never change. And that's why we can have hope, which doesn't disappoint. When you put your hope in him, in every circumstance in your life, in every situation, in every relationship in your life, in every expectation in him, he will fulfill it. Hands off. He will fulfill it. Why? Because he is crazy about you. You know, this appointment may, means no appointment. God says, but that was not the appointment we had. It was us meddling in, and that's okay. But if you get disappointed, maybe a nice check. Every time you have an expectation which is not met and it ends up in this appointment, then you know it was not hope, because hope does not disappoint. And that's clear. Then it's a clear check for yourself. Hey, I'm disappointed in that one or in that one, in my leaders. In Pastor Suzanne, who maybe didn't pray for me how I wanted her to pray. She completely prayed something else. Like, what do I do with that? I ask for this, and you're coming with that. Let the Lord do it his way. Don't interfere. So it's a good check for you. When you're disappointed, you can turn to the Lord and say, Lord, I obviously didn't put my hope in you, but I want that. And if you don't load the Lord... Life is really without hope. But the good news is, you're here today, even if you're watching online. I'm going to give you the opportunity to do the greatest thing you can do in your life. And that is accepting Jesus as your Savior and Messiah, as your Lord in your life. Let's just bow our heads and just close our eyes. And we're going to pray together. And if you, want, if you want and you have never prayed this prayer in your life, if you never ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, then I want to ask you on this moment to just pray with us for the first time. And let it just let the words wash you. And it's really that simple. It doesn't take anything else. Elaine, only, sorry, only a prayer. Only the words saying. And then we're going to say it together with you. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for your sacrifice, for the forgiveness of my sins. You took it all on you, on the cross. And I want to step into that, accept it, accept you as my Lord and Savior, and step up in resurrection power. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you pray that for the first time, we're going to applaud for you. Because only in him there is hope. Without him, it's only darkness. He is the light. Amen. Just grab your communion elements. Also, if you're at home, if you're watching online, grab your communion elements. Just a piece of bread or a cracker or, a cracker or biscuit, whatever you can find. It symbolizes the broken body of Jesus. 
in that we put our hope, literally just look at it, the hope will not disappoint. And if you don't have the cup, just put your hand up, then we can pass it on to you. We don't want anyone to miss it. If you also, if you've never done this in your life, then it's really simply, it doesn't require anything. It's not like you need to be holy before you do it. It's not like you need to be all, have your life all together before you do it. No, we do it so that we can step into having, having it a bit more all together because it's really through Jesus who's helping us. And we want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for your broken body. We want to thank you that with us in your, in your mind, you went to the cross. You were broken. You were, your back was open. The scars on your back, on your whole body, the piercing. And then you kept on thinking about us, the hope we need based on that love. We want to receive it now. And I want to speak over you if you're here today or if you're watching online. Just want to speak that hope over you. That you dare to look at the cross. The only thing you're allowed to look in the, pla in the past is the cross. Not experiences, but the cross. And I speak hope over you, which will not disappoint. Speak wisdom over you. That you know what the Lord wants for you. I proclaim over you a hope in heaven that you hear his voice for your life. I speak wholeness and healing for your body and for your soul through the Holy Communion, through the broken body. In Jesus' name, amen. Partake. You know, we have been through so much stuff in our lives which tries to influence our future. But the blood of Jesus is washing that conscience clean. That you take no fears from the past, that you don't take any worries from the past, no past experiences dictating your future. Only the blood of Jesus who says, I've dealt with it. His life, as this blood is going through your system, I proclaim that it's like the blood of Jesus flowing through your veins, bringing new, fresh life and hope and revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>